Hello everybody, it's Miss Mac here. So glad to be talking to you again. I hope everybody had a nice, restful, relaxing break and is ready to get back to school. Um, we are going to pick up kind of where we left off in statistics. So if you remember before break, we were talking about what we call the measures of center, mean, median, and mode. Now, I don't know if you remember, but we called these measures of center because they kind of describe what happens in the middle of a data set the middle, what's representative of the middle part of the data. And so what we're going to do today is do a quick review of what those measures of center are, and then talk about why we would want to know um, those different things and when you might want to use each one to describe a data set. So again, we are talking about measures of center, the description of what's happening kind of in the middle of a data set. So the first one we have is mean. Remember, mean is the average. And to find an average, you add everything up and you divide by how many numbers you have. The second one is median. Remember, median is the number in the middle. You arrange things from low to high. And then you cross off end to end till you get to the middle. The number in the middle sometimes is a specific number in your set. If it's not, you take the two middle ones, add and divide by two. And then lastly, we have mode. And the mode is the number that occurs most often. Sometimes there are several modes, sometimes there are no modes. So we're gonna talk specifically about these and how you would choose one of these to best represent your data if necessary. So, a couple questions for you. Why do we have statistics? And when is the best time to use each measure of center to describe a data set? So the first thing I do want to definitely talk about right now is why we have statistics. So if you think about it, statistics, I mean, you see them a lot. You see them in, in um, newspapers, you see them online, you see them when you're looking up something to buy, all that kind of thing. So there are several reasons to, to have statistics. One is for conducting research. So companies that are creating um, new programs, cre they are creating new items, new consumer um, items like cars or washing machines or things like that. They have to conduct research on um, the items themselves that they are uh, building, but they also have to uh, conduct research on who's gonna buy them, what they can charge, things like that. For you specifically, since you're not gonna be, many of you will not necessarily be um, in a research related field, the biggest thing that we need you to do is to think about how you can use um, statistics in your base in your daily life. So one reason you need to be able to understand statistics is you need to be able to read and evaluate um, info. So read and evaluate info. So things that you're reading in the newspaper or looking up online um, to kind of help you maybe decide what you want to buy. Um, you also will use that to think critically about what is actually being presented to you and how does that affect you or does it at all. And then lastly, I think this is probably the biggest and most important thing, and it all kind of really goes together, is we want you to be an informed consumer. I don't know what happened to my pen all of a sudden, but we want you to be an informed consumer. So that means when you go out to buy a new car, when you go out to buy a washing machine, when you go out to buy a new toilet, something for your house, you can look things up online, you can see reviews, you can see data, you can see statistics, and then make a good choice for you in your situation. So kind of all of these three things go together, the most important being an informed consumer. Now, we'll talk about the other question there in just a minute. So the next thing I want to do is talk about this example. So it says, Charlie Brown kicked a football seven times on each of three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The chart below shows how far he kicked the ball each time. So you can see on Friday, he kicked a lot of zeros, which probably means that Lucy picked up the football all the time, except for the last one, she let him kick it and he kicked it 21 yards. Saturday, um, he was pretty consistent between zero and eight. 
And on Sunday, you can see he kicked it a lot of times, noting in particular this 49 here that's really big. So down below here, what I have, oh, there we go, is a question for you. It says, determine which measure of center, mean, median, and mode is the best representation for each set of data. And so what I already did is I took Friday's data and calculated the mean, median, and mode. Saturday's data, I calculated the mean, median, and mode, and Sunday's data, I did the same. So what I'd like to do is I would like to start with Friday's data. And we're just going to start right there. And you can see that for Friday's data, the mean is 3, the median is 0, and the mode is also 0. So if I were to ask you which one of those three numbers is best representation of this set of data right here, I know that that data set is made up of six zeros and a 21. So if I were going to pick one of these three representations for this data, I would probably not pick the mean. The mean is the average, and if you notice, we mostly have zeros across there with a 21. That 21 obviously changes my um, mean to a much higher number than what's typical. So on that day, he typically got zero six times, but then he got a 21. So I'm gonna say, if I were to pick one of these um, measures of center, mean would not be the one that's most representative. Now the median and mode are both zero. So either one would be an okay description or representation of this data, but I probably in particular would pick the mode because remember the mode is what happens most often. And although these numbers are both zero, the fact that it's the mode and I see that zero happens six times makes it the best choice if I were gonna pick one of these to represent the data. Okay, so for Friday, I would say the mode is most representative. When I go to look at Saturday and I look at these values and I say, all right, if you had to pick one of these, mean, median, or mode, which one is most representative of this data? Well, when I look at it, I know, let's start down here with the mode. I have two zeros, but my data ranges from zero to eight, and there's lots of numbers in between. So I don't think mode is representative of most of those numbers in there. My mean and my median are actually very, very close together. And so I would say probably in this case, you could choose either one because one's 3.19 and one is four. But typically if I was gonna choose the mean or the median and they were that close, I would choose the mean because it's a true average of those set of that set of data. And you'll see here in a second why um, I did not choose median. When we look at this last example, and we look at Sunday and I ask you which set of, or which uh, measure of center is best representative of this data. If you look at this data, my low is three and it goes three, six, 10, 11, 13, 15. And then there's this one big 49 stuck in there. So when I look at this, first of all, there's no mode. So I cannot use a mode to represent this data. I have to go between my median and my mean. Now, in this case, the numbers are not listed low to high, but I know that my mean has been affected by this 49 thrown in there. That raises the average quite a bit in comparison to the rest of the numbers. So if I were to arrange these numbers low to high, the 49 would be way down here on this end. And because we do the crossing off end to end, the 49 does not have a direct effect on the middle of the data. So in this case, I would choose the median as my best representation because the mean is thrown off by that 49. So you'll notice that given different sets of data, if I were to ask you which measure of center best represents it, you could have different reasons for choosing different numbers based on the data. And that's kind of what we're going with here. All righty. So if we take a look at this example, it says, 
The table below shows student, student test scores on each of Ms. Mack's last three quizzes. So quiz one, quiz two, and quiz three. And you'll notice up here that I already have all these data points in order lowest to highest for each one of these quizzes. So what I'd like you to do right now is you're gonna pause the video and you're just gonna look at this screen and you're gonna look at each quiz down below there and you're gonna decide which measure of center, mean, median, or mode, best represents each quiz score. And then what I want you to do is just have a piece of paper and a pencil, write down which one is which, and think about why you would choose that particular um, measure of center. So I want you to go ahead and pause it. And then after you've had a chance to look at each one of those, go ahead and start it because I am going to go through what I would choose for each one. So go ahead and pause. All righty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about what I would do. So if I look at quiz one, so if I look at these scores right here, and I'm looking at these three measures of center, well, right away when I look at this, I know I'm not going to use mode because it's two fives and two eights, but I've got other numbers going on. So I have a mean and I have a median that I could consider. So in this case, I know my median is eight, which is the middle number. But if I look at my numbers, two, five, five, eight, eight, nine, ten, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, the eight's kind of in the middle when I range them low to high, but I have the two and two is way far away from the median of eight. And the 10 is pretty close, but because the two is so much farther away than the 10, I probably would not choose median. I would probably choose me because the distance from 6.7 down to two and 6.7 up to 10 is a little bit like more evenly spread out. So that's what I would choose for quiz number one. Okay, quiz number two, looking at these numbers and looking at these measures of center. Right away, I notice I have a two and a whole bunch of 37s. The two obviously throws the mean off because most of the numbers are 37, so it's not that. And I could either have the median or mode, and technically either one would be correct, but probably because the idea is the mode is what occurs most and it's almost all 37s, I would choose the mode of 37 being the best. Then lastly, we have these scores. Notice they go three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a humongous 51. So when I look at this, the first thing I know is that my mean has been greatly affected by that 51. So it's not gonna be 11. That's higher than almost all of the data scores. So I have a median and I have a mode. So when I look at this, and they're really not that far apart, um, I probably would not choose the mode because there are only two fours. It's not like the example above where it was almost all 37s. So in this case, if we arrange low to high and then go to the middle, the 5.5, the median would be the best. Okay, hopefully that's what you got. Now we're going to go back to our questions. We already answered why we have or why we have statistics and why you need to know them. What I want to talk about is when is the best time to use each uh, measure of center. So let's just start with the easy one, the mode. And again, I'm not sure why my writing is so bad right this second. The mode. The mode is used when most data, I apologize for how bad this is, is one number. So if I have almost all the same number and very little else, I'm going to use the mode. I am going to use the, all right, I am going to use the median. Think about the median. That's the one we chose when the data was kind of closely clustered, but there was one number that was way higher or way lower that would throw the mean off. So we want to say um, those really high numbers or really no low numbers we call extreme values or outliers because they're not like the other ones. So the median we're going to use when the data 
is clustered. Oh my gosh, you can, I don't even know how you can read this. Um, data is clustered, but um, there is an extreme, <laughs> I don't even know what it says, value. That's why you have to listen to me. Okay, so that's what we have there. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the mo or mean. So the mean is what we're going to use if the data is pretty well clustered and evenly spread out. So we'll say evenly spread out or clustered. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to have some practice on just choosing what is the best um, measure of center for some data. And that's going to be the first part of your assignment for today. Then what we're going to do is we are also going to be talking about um, an additional like topic related to this, but it's an extension of this. So that's kind of what the plan is. If you have any questions, um, please ask. Please make sure you're completing your assignments and doing things on time. It's really going to help you, help you um, get through this stuff. Thanks. Have a good day.